Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and today we're gonna to talk to four incredible Denver women. And you're gonna learn so many new things. You're gonna be just jumping out of your seat because it's so incredibly awesome. So stay tuned, because first up, you're gonna to talk to Ashley DePaulis from Ash Fitness, and she's gonna share how we can ignite our inner athlete avatar. So we are here with Ashley DePaulis of Ash Fitness, and she's gonna share with us how we can ignite our inner athlete avatar. So first off, I wanna know what is an inner athlete avatar? Yeah, so a lot of times people will say to me, I don't have an inner athlete because I was not an athlete in high school or college mm -hmm. or even now today. And I challenge them to say, yes, you do. Uh huh. So I provide with the inner athlete avatar a range of activities that can count as athletic. Awesome. So we're yeah. going to get moving today. Yeah, we are. Good. So we can start with bocce ball. How many of you think bocce ball is athletic? I don't know what bocce ball is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played bocce ball. <laughs> So bocce ball is an Italian game. You have one black ball and then a bunch of other colored balls. Uh -huh. And you can have so many people on a team, but it's very social. So you can okay. have a drink in your hand. You know, older Italian men might be smoking a cigar. Okay, I like, I like the idea of having a drink in my hand while playing sports. Yeah, yes. so it's fun. <laughs> it's fun, leisurely. Good. But the cool thing is, what makes it athletic is when you're holding the drink in your hand. So let's just uh -huh. hold that drink in our hand. Okay. And we have a ball. Okay. Okay. And then we see that black ball in front of us and we want to hit it. Okay. So it's a lot of hand eye coordination. And then balance. Like this? No, you're not going to throw it. Oh. We're going to okay. roll it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I didn't right. tell you that. Don't throw a ball at anyone. Okay. <laughs> so you have your drink. <laughs> And you're looking at the black ball. Okay. And you're going to keep your eye on that black ball. You're going to bring your arm back and you're going to roll it and try to hit that ball okay. in front of you. Okay. Got it. So in that, the reason I consider it athletic is the balance, the hand-eye coordination, and then, and then the target. Yes. And yes, you're yeah. taking a squat down, you're swinging your arm back yeah. to follow through. So it's not just okay, I went to the gym, I spent 30 minutes on the elliptical, and then I lifted weights. Uh huh. So that's, that's one leisurely activity. I like that, okay. It's kind of like bowling too. It's yeah, like, you know. and think of everything that, if you think of competitive bowlers, I mean, think of how oh. much goes into that. Yeah, I was so good at it in high school. Yeah. Yes, I had my own sparkly red ball that said <gasps> my nickname, it said Nikki on it. Oh. Made for my fingertips. Yeah, and so how often do you think of that as like, being athletic or being... I did not think of it as athletic. It yeah. was kind of like the nerd sport. I didn't yeah. tell anybody. They announced it publicly at uh -huh. the award ceremony in high school and I was just kind of like this. <gasps> so from the bowling team. <laughs> 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 so it's cool that you're saying that because I feel like these inner athlete avatars actually take a little bit, they lessen the guilt and shame uh -huh. in the health and fitness game. Nice. Yeah, because we can consider all these activities that we enjoy as ones that, I don't know where I'm going with that. Like it's still athletic, yeah. even if, yes. um, even if it's not like uh, what you look at on TV, like yes. the big time soccer players yes. or the, you know, basketball, yeah. I don't have to be drenched yeah. with sweat. Yeah. To express my inner athlete. Yes. Nice. Yes. So on the <laughs> other end of that, because we we're just talking about the sweat and the grit and the hardcore work. Yeah. Is if you think about Bo Jackson. So he played a multitude of sports. Uh-huh. Baseball, football. Wow. Um, so the training that had to go into that was pretty intense to be good at all those different sports. Yeah, that seems crazy. Yeah. So there are the people who are more drawn to that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I need to train in a particular way right. to get a certain result in an activity okay. that I would like to play. You know, the whole point of this is to say that no matter what motivates you uh -huh. to get moving, it counts. Yeah. It counts because it's kind of like that tortoise and hare. So you have the, 
the tortoise that moves very slowly, uh -huh. but they're consistent. And that yes. consistency over time, no matter what it is, whether it's walking, playing bocce ball, maybe both, uh -huh. or training like Bo Jackson, gets you to your end result, which awesome. is feeling good, alive, and with tons of energy. Nice. Confidence. So if you want to feel alive, have intensity of con and, con and confidence, mm -hmm. then absolutely work on that continuous mm -hmm. process of getting fit and active mm -hmm. versus focusing on being Bo Jackson. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <about that. laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley, for those tips. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so ignite your inner athlete. Because if it doesn't motivate you, it won't move you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Wow, that was amazing. You just learned how to ignite your inner athlete, and now you're gonna find out how to be a detective. Stay tuned to find out what that really means and why it's important. Hey there, we're here with Ann K. Ming, and she's gonna show us how to be an ingredient detective. This is gonna be so fun. So first off, I need to know what an ingredient detective does. Is this a job, or is this something that we can do on our own? This is definitely something you can do on your own, okay. but I've made it my job. Um, and I go around and help individuals and families go through their products from personal care to cosmetics to household cleaners huh. to find um, healthy, safe, safe alternatives. Nice. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, what were you gonna say? <laughs> oh, so to be an ingredient detective uh -huh. means that you are focused on what's in the product mm -hmm. and not what's on the front of the product. Okay, so that's a little deep for me. So what's in the product and not what's on the product? Yes, so this didn't come to my attention until a couple years ago, uh -huh. and um, I learned that there are over 80,000 chemicals used in commerce today, wow. and we actually only have information about, about 200 of them. Oh gosh. And do you know what your largest organ is? My skin? Yes, and what you put <laughs> on your skin gets directly absorbed into your bloodstream within about 40 seconds. Wow, okay. So all of those things that we're putting onto our skin are getting into our bloodstream and affecting our endocrine system. Mm, okay, gosh, now I feel like this is serious. I need to know, I need to know, what are you gonna tell me? <laughs> so when I decided to become an ingredient detective, it was yeah. because I was looking for products that were completely harmful chemical free. Okay. And I was noticing when I'd go to my health food store um, that if I would turn the product around, I would still see ingredients that were no-nos. Those long names that you'll never pronounce. Yeah, and actually yes. today I wanted to share with you a very simple one that you can start looking for right away. Okay. So that is the word fragrance. Oh, I was expecting one of those really big words, you know, the alpha, alpha hydroxy linoleic acid, you know, all these different yes. long terms. Yeah, I know, it's shocking, right? Yeah. It can also be called perfume or parfum. Okay. Um, and fragrance is a loophole. Mm -hmm. And companies can put thousands of ingredients under that one term. Oh, wow. The basis for fragrance is actually 3,000 different chemicals. Oh, my goodness. So the fragrance that is in a fancy perfume at yeah. Macy's might have some of the same ingredients that your toilet bowl cleaner has. <gasps> I'm sorry. I am just so in awe that I'm just, I'm going, oh, oh, over and over again. Um, that's, that's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. So what do we do about this? So I encourage people to always read the labels. Okay. It's really hard to find products that are absolutely completely free and clear of harmful ingredients. But if we mm -hmm. start with fragrance, that's a pretty good place to begin. Okay. So is it rare to find a product product that doesn't say the word fragrance on it? Actually, products will say fragrance free. Okay. I want you to be aware though you have to be an ingredient detective because, us, because oftentimes it actually will have the word fragrance on the back because the fragrance oh. isn't necessarily the scent, it's in order to balance out the other chemical smells. Oh, I get it, okay, gosh. And the word fragrance, 75% of the time, is legally hiding phthalates. And phthalates are known to be endocrine disruptors that are linked with birth defects, autism, and um, cancer. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's a great place to start taking action and getting that rid of getting rid of that in your products. Okay. Wow. Do you have anything else that you want to share with us about how we can be better um, 
uh, detectives? Um, so I found a product line called Pure Haven Essentials, uh -huh. and it's a one-stop shop from personal care to cosmetics to household cleaners, baby products. They are completely harmful chemical free. Wow. Nice. And they smell great because they have essential oils. Great. So we'll definitely be getting in touch with you to get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time and to share with us uh, the dangers of that fragrance terminology and inspire us to look more at labels and learn more about what's in the products that we're putting on our skin. Now that you know how to be a detective, it's time for you to learn how to make your own dairy-free ranch dressing. Stay tuned. We're here with Victoria Wolf of the Gluten-Free Explorer and she's gonna share with us how to make dairy-free ranch dressing that goes on this incredible pizza. Oh my gosh, Victoria, do you know how long it's been since I've eaten pizza? How long? Uh, I think it was like 2008. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's almost as long as I've been gluten and, and dairy-free. Yes. And um, we started a company a couple years ago be, for just that reason, because there was no good gluten-free options that myself or my husband wanted to eat. I know. And pizza, you, pizza, you just can't it's live like without staple. pizza. It's like a staple. It is. It's a, I don't expect people to eat it every day, but it's a right. treat and you want to be able to have it and everybody else around you is eating pizza. Why can't you eat pizza? It's so lonely to watch it everybody is. else eating oh. pizza during movie night. Yeah, you have no idea yeah. how many times I've sat and watched people eat food that I can never eat ever right. again. And they sit there and go, oh my God, I don't know how I could ever live without this. And I'm like, hello, yeah. <laughs> right there with you. So All right. we're gonna do, um, because dairy-free nowadays is more difficult, I feel, than gluten-free, especially going out to restaurants and even yes. cooking at home. Because there's some things that, that I love that I can't live without. And they're usually cream-based, you know, cream creamy dressings, like blue yes. cheese, ranch. Oh, I miss those. And so I discovered a way to make a dairy-free ranch that tastes, in my opinion, better than regular ranch. And there's, a, there's, a, secret, there's a secret weapon or ingredient. Uh -huh. And what that is, is we start with a, um, this is a cashew milk. And you can do cashew uh -huh. soy or rice milk or almond milk, whatever you want. And we add some vinegar to it. And we okay. let it sit for about 10 minutes. And what that does is it kind of, I won't say curdles it because that's that's not a good word. And, but changes and, the texture. Yeah, it kind of makes a buttermilk out of it because that's oh, what ranch okay. dressing is made out of is buttermilk. Yeah. And so it gives it some tang and it gives some gets it some acidity. So you just um, I'll just do this one for you. Okay. You just put a half a teaspoon of vinegar Into. in there and you let it sit there for ten minutes. Okay. But we've got some right there, so we're going to put that in last. But that's that's your secret ingredient that without it you're not going to get that tang that you're used to tasting with a um, with a ranch dressing. That's so easy the, enough. the basis for this is mayonnaise and we have a cup of mayonnaise which you can put in the bowl now. Here's a spoon there for that. Okay. Um, this is not a low calorie dressing <laughs> whatsoever. Um, my favorite food of all time is mayonnaise which should have its own food group but I don't think that's really going to happen in my lifetime. Or chipotle mayonnaise, one yeah. of my favorites. But um, mayonnaise is a really wonderful base for just about any dairy free sauce. So to this we're going to add, and the fresh herbs are key here, and you'll tell when you, when you taste it, it has a very herbaceous um, uh, taste to it. Mm -hmm. You can also do dried, but we're doing fresh. So we have a tablespoon of parsley, you can just toss parsley. that in there. Okay. A tablespoon of chives. Chives. And a tablespoon of dill. And then you can start mix, we can mix it up or we can put them all, yeah, just mix it a little bit. Okay. It's going to be really kind of thick Super and tight. Super thick, yeah. yeah. And then we have a tablespoon, a uh, teaspoon, I'm sorry, of onion powder. Okay. And then garlic powder. And mustard, dried mustard, which is going to give oh. it even more of a tang. Okay, so mix that up really well. Okay. And it's really thick right now, but that's what, what's uh, the, the cashew milk is going to thin it out and add, add some more body to it. I bet this is meditative. I could do this all day. <laughs> If that's what cooking is for me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, at, at any time you'd like, you can okay. start pouring that in. Pour it in slowly and whisk at the same time. So okay. pour what you left and. Oh, this is new. I don't think I've done this ever. Yeah. And then once you get it all in there, then you're going to really want to whisk it um, okay. to where you're, you're pretty, pretty vigorously. So you get it. You see, it's a little lumpy right now. Uh -huh. You want to get the lumps out. Okay. So does it change the flavor much if you use different kinds of milks? No, I've, um, I started with almond and I've moved to cashew because I just like cashew better now and mm -hmm. I don't notice a, a, a difference in flavor. I think if you used a rice milk, you would, you would find a difference because it's not quite as um, uh, of a full body milk as a, as a cashew or uh -huh. almond. And I used to use soy too and it was fine. So that's... It looks, it's starting to already look mm -hmm. like... And then at this point you would taste it and if you need, um, you'll, you'll need probably a little bit of salt. So there's some salt and there's some pepper, so just 
put some pinches in there. Just a yeah, that's probably okay. good. And a little bit of pepper. Okay, oh, and then okay. mix it it's a up. A lot of pepper. Yeah. I'm not a pepper fan, but you definitely could put as much as you want if you are a pepper fan. I love pepper, especially from yeah. the grinders. Yeah, that's from a grinder, so that nice. was ground. Freshly ground, it was only hours ago. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's how easy it was. And what's amazing is I use this with a lot of different variations. I make a garlic cream sauce. I can, Ooh. I make a blue, oh, well, I do a little goat and sheep cheese. Okay. Um, very little, but they make a, a sheep blue cheese and I make a blue cheese dressing with oh, it. Oh, I've never heard of that. That sounds yeah, amazing. Trader Joe's. So if you like to try it, you okay. can, um, carrots, broccoli, whatever you want, you can try and give me your opinion as to whether it tastes like the ranch dressing of your memories. It's been a long time, but I think this is what ranch dressing is supposed to taste like. This is amazing. Thank you. That's what I remember ranch dressing tasting like. And so the pizza here, a little story on that, is um, there's a thing every year in Vegas called the uh, Pizza Expo. And at the Pizza Expo, they have the International Pizza Challenge where people mm -hmm. from around the world come and make pizza and compete in different categories. And they have a gluten-free division. And so Rich, my husband, and I, we, was, we went to the Pizza Expo to check out the pizza world. And he's like, hey, let's enter. And I'm like, sure, why not? You why know? not? <laughs> <laughs> and so we go and we said, you know what? I'm gluten and dairy free. I'm not going to present a pizza I can't eat. Yes. So I went in there with a gluten and dairy free pizza um, and we won the whole thing. Oh so. my God. So I get to taste an award winning pizza today. Mm -hmm. You've just made my life. It's bacon, chicken, broccoli, ranch with some red onions. Okay. And there's a secret ingredient in there too. I am in, into secret ingredients. <laughs> Are you going to tell us the secret? Yeah, it's nutritional yeast. Mm. I usually like to tell people after they eat it because that sounds very scary, nutritional yeast. Oh, this yeast. is so good. I had to tell the judges not to be scared. They're like, what's this ingredient? I'm like, nutritional yeast. It's yummy. Gosh, it tastes healthy, too. Oh, it is uh, healthy. Well, yeah, it's, it's broccoli. broccoli. There's broccoli on it. Yeah, it's green. <laughs> yeah. You made pizza healthy. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I tried to. Well, if you ignore the bacon. <laughs> but, you know, in, in my opinion, everything is healthy in moderation. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything should be, you know, no, you can't eat that unless you eat it every day for a month or something. Then that would be bad. Well, it is amazing. I'm so glad you brought this. And thank you so much, Victoria, for sharing your incredible recipe for a dairy-free ranch dressing and your awesome award-winning pizza. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Okay. Oh cool. my God, this is so good. Oh my God, that pizza was so good. I can't wait for you to try it. Next up, you're gonna learn how to be a better leader by overcoming the major challenges that leaders often face. Stay tuned. All right, we are here with Lori Heisler from the Leadership Influence, and we're gonna talk about the three biggest challenges leaders face and how to overcome them. Thanks, Lori, for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, so what are some of the challenges as as, that we face as leaders? I consider myself a leader. Absolutely, you definitely are a leader. Um, well, I would say the three challenges I'm going to share today all come down to a bigger challenge. There's an underlying challenge as to why we struggle with these three things. But okay. when it comes to leading a team, one of the biggest challenges that leaders struggle with is hiring and retaining uh, the right people. Yes. And the way that we can accomplish this one is to really know ourselves and what it is that we're looking for. That's so huge. Um, and what our values are. Mm -hmm. And the biggest mistake I see people make with this, especially in hiring, is they make it all about them and not about the person that they're bringing on. Oh, so what do you mean by that? I feel like that's loaded and I feel something from that, <laughs> but I want to know what that means yeah. to you. So when you're working, it's a mutual agreement. and. Uh -huh. Uh, I think we all know that we want fulfillment in the work that we do. And when we make hiring all about us, we forget the most important person, which is the person that we're bringing on to the team. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get hiring right, we'll definitely have the next two challenges that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So get your hiring right get, first. Get your hiring right and really model what it is that you're saying that you're looking for. Uh -huh. So one quick example is I see people hiring all the time and they're looking for, for someone who's innovative. Uh -huh. But they're putting an ad on um, Indeed that's asking for a Normal. resume and cover letter. Okay. With really boring language, vocabulary no one understands, and or regimented rules uh -huh. that you can expect. And no one wants to work for an environment, in an environment yes. like that. So basically you're saying, I'm looking for an innovative person, but I'm not innovative. Right, like if you want to be innovative <laughs> in your hiring practices, because that's what you want, ask for a video, ask yeah. for them to come in and do something experiential, do something different yes. than what everyone else is doing. So you need to be able to um, attract what you're looking for. So attract innovation, don't ask for innovation. Yes, by modeling it. Yes, exactly. beautiful. 
Yeah. And then the second thing I see uh, leaders really struggle with is actually getting results from the people that they've hired. Yes. <laughs> and again, it's because leaders, and this is kind of the underlying theme, we make it all about us mm -hmm. instead of about them. And if you want to get results from the people that you lead, you have to know what drives them, you have to know what motivates them, and you have to know what keeps them there. Yeah. So um, we could go into a lot of other reasons why you might not be seeing results from the people that you lead, but ultimately it starts with hiring mm -hmm. and it starts with really knowing why they're there to begin with. Yeah, how many times have we um, applied for a job, gotten, well, it's happened to me, applied for a job, gotten the interview and said, I'm here to talk about this and this and this, I can absolutely do this, and they say, well, that's not what I'm looking for. And I am quoting back everything that I read in that job <laughs> ad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So transparency is also yes. definitely something we could talk about. There's as a well. disconnect there sometimes. There is. And, you know, one of the things that happens as to why people don't uh, see the results from they want. From, from their team that they are looking for is because they may have done all of those things right, mm -hmm. but then they may also lack the confidence to engage in a difficult conversation, mm, right? And I see this all the time, not just with leaders who lead teams, but, but women especially, mm -hmm. who may want to have a conversation with their boss because they want to have that pay raise conversation. Yeah. Um, and they're worried about how that's going to go. They're not quite sure how to approach it. Yes. Um, and so the third challenge that I see leaders face uh -huh. is, engaging in difficult conversations. Yes. Whether that's offering authentic, necessary feedback, again, for the employee's growth, right, for mm -hmm. their benefit as well as the benefit of the people around them, or whether it's for um, your own growth because you want feedback from you, the, the people from who are employees. leading you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, really, it all comes down to the fact that leadership is not about me, it's, it's about the people that I serve. And okay. it's, it's not about us, it's about leading the people that we've brought on that are in our community and the people that have ser that, that are there to support us. Yeah, so how do we switch that around? It sounds like you're talking about empathy, you know, so how do we Absolutely. turn that around, stop living from our own viewpoint and start being able to see from the other person? I love that you brought up empathy because I would say, um, along with making it about the other people, or making it about us and not about who we're really there to serve, um, we have to do the inner work. Mm -hmm. We always have to do the inner work, and this is where we fall short, is we, we avoid those conversations because we don't know how they're gonna make us feel. Yes. Right? It's scary, yes. even as the leader. Yes, for sure. And so you need to work on that confidence, um, work on putting out and being comfortable with saying what it is that you need, mm -hmm. and work through those inner demons so that when you are faced with those challenges, uh, you're ready to take them on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for sharing those amazing tips. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. Nice. <laughs> What an amazing show we just had. Thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver. And don't forget that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you again soon. We are Women of Denver!